You changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son. You're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you start the day. A lot of us drink the coffee or the chai or a little water with lemon. But that, Rocky Balboa from the movie, Rocky Balboa talking to his son about what life is and how you go get it. That is what it is all about. And you will see why I opened the show with that. I'm Dave Rubin, by the way. This is the Rubin Report Direct Message. It's April 14th, 2022. And there is a lot going on in the world. The theme of today's show is that the tide is turning. I really believe it, people. And I want to declare today, officially, day one of the post-woke world. Look at that. We even made a little banner. Put it back up. Little banner to say day one post-woke world. There is good stuff happening. I have been telling you guys, it's not enough to complain about it. We got to figure out how to fight back. Exactly what Rocky said. The world is tough. We've all realized that we've been stuck in the muck, in the mire of this woke BS, but there are signs that we can win. And as you probably have heard, if you've been on the computer machine today, uh, we got a massive freaking sign just in the last few hours. Elon Musk is trying to buy all of Twitter. This story that we've been tracking over the last two weeks, he's making his freaking move and in a big way. And I'm gonna link that to a bunch of other things going on. Individuals, he's just one guy. I'm just one guy, you're just one guy or gal. I'm not a biologist, I don't know what you are. But all of us are just one person. And if we stand up to this machine, I think we can see that it actually is a wet paper bag and it will fold. That is the theme of today's show. I am amped up and ready to roll. Want to remind you guys, I am going on tour, kicking it off this Tuesday in West Palm Beach with Donald Trump Jr. at the Palm Beach Improv. Then I'm in Clearwater, Florida with Benny Johnson, Raleigh, North Carolina with Andrew Clavin, Atlanta, Georgia with Michael Malice, Chicago, Illinois with Yan Me Park, Dallas, Texas with Glenn Beck. Washington, D.C. with Megan McCain, West Nyack, New York with Megan Kelly, Brea, California with Dennis Prager, Oxnard, California with Larry Elder, San Jose, California with Douglas Murray, Phoenix, Arizona with Blake Masters and Charlie Kirk, and Denver, Colorado with Brian Callen. You can get your tickets at DaveRubin.com slash events. And again, all the VIP tickets keep selling out. So I think we just added a couple more this morning. By the way, just FYI, Facebook is not letting us put ads on the tour, we are working through that right now. So if you haven't seen anything on Facebook, which is where most people buy tickets to things, they're not letting us put ads. And I'm not allowed to put ads on Twitter because I was suspended back in July for warning that mandates, vaccine mandates were coming. So even though they unsuspended me, they suspended my ad account on there. So I'm fighting the freaking machine, people. And Elon Musk is fighting the machine. And today is day one of a post 
woke world. I'm not kidding. I think we can do this. I think there's signs. So let's roll. Uh, the big story of the day, and we've got a quote from Reuters, billionaire Elon Musk offers to buy Twitter for $41.39 billion, a regulatory filing shows. Okay, so this is this is pretty powerful stuff. Now, if you were paying attention for the last two weeks, you may remember that uh, about a week and a half ago or so, he bought this first 9.2% of Twitter, which made him the largest stakeholder in Twitter, uh, but he was not obviously a majority shareholder, right? He didn't own over 50% of it, but he was the largest individual stakeholder. Then he said he was gonna get on the board. They offered him a seat. They had a couple tweets going back and forth between him and the, the CEO of Twitter and the former CEO of Twitter and all that, and everybody's playing nice. But then of course, the, the woke activists that are in the company because they've been eating this company alive, much like Disney's employees are eating Disney alive, and all of these companies are being eaten alive by activist employees who should have no right to direct a company. You're an employee, you get a check, do your job, go home, get a life. Um, then it started getting weird. So Elon Musk said he wasn't gonna take the board seat because if he had taken the board seat, that would have capped him at about 14 and a half percent. That's just the way the rules work. And he would have never been able to do a hostile takeover, meaning just take over the whole freaking company. So a few days ago, that's what he said. I'm not taking the board seat. Actually, Twitter at 11 p.m. on Sunday night announced that he wasn't taking the board seat. And it led to this and it is freaking beautiful. Here is the letter from Elon Musk to Brett Taylor, the chairman of the board at Twitter. Uh, from Elon, I invested in Twitter as I believe in its potential to be the platform for free speech around the globe. And I believe free speech is a societal imperative for a functioning democracy. However, since making my investment, I now realize the company will neither thrive nor serve the societal imperative in its current form. Twitter needs to be transformed as a private company. As a result, I am offering to buy 100 percent of Twitter for $54.20 per share in cash. My offer is my best and final offer, and if it is not accepted, I would need to reconsider my position as shareholder. Twitter has extraordinary potential. I will unlock it. Elon Musk. Uh, can you guys let me know the, the shares of Twitter? What are they worth right now? Because he's paying a massive premium on those shares. I am sure they are worth much less than that 50 plus dollars. They're, yeah, they're worth right now, Twitter's shares. Is this as of this morning? Because I would love to know what they were even yesterday if they jumped. So right now, Twitter's shares are $46.47 a share. So he's tacking on about $6 a share, okay? Uh, that's yesterday's, oh, and yesterday it was 45.44. So it went up because of Elon, okay? You understand what's going on here? And he is saying, I will pay another roughly $6 per share just to take the whole freaking thing right now. So there is a massive war brewing. And just understand, and this is why I wanted to do this as the theme of the show, we have watched the woke monster destroy everything. We have allowed companies like Twitter, like Disney, uh, all of these companies, the list goes on and on, right? We have watched all the commercials you watch, just absolutely everything. We have watched all of these companies push their woke ideology on us. We have watched them censor us. We have watched them ban people. They have allowed us to say what you can say and what you can't say, who can say what, when they can say it, all of it. And here's one guy. Now he's a pretty extraordinary guy, right? He's the, he's the Iron Man of our time, right? But he's just one man and he's saying, I am putting my money where my mouth is. Think of the freaking headaches that this is gonna cause for Elon Musk, right? Like this is a guy, he could literally be like, you know what? I've just had about enough of Earth. I'm getting on my own rocket ship that will be the most mind-blowing freaking thing ever. And I'm gonna spend the rest of my life going to Mars. And then I'm gonna build a colony on Mars and I'm gonna have my own planet. That's what he could do. And that would actually be pretty cool. And maybe he will do that. But instead he said, I'm gonna put 50 freaking billion dollars. Is that the number? Is it 50, 50 billion total? What's the total number? 100% of Twitter. What's the actual number that he's gonna put down here? It's, it's incredible, it doesn't even matter what the number is. We'll get the, the oh yeah, $41.39 billion. I'm gonna put, it doesn't even matter whether he has a gajillion dollars or not, but he's saying, I will do something. There is a problem. We all know there's a problem and I will do something. And this is how you freaking fight back.
I happen to write a book about that sort of thing. In case you're interested, it's still number one on most of the Amazon charts. If you want to check it out, DaveRubin.com slash book. Uh, but we are now going to go into a half hour of how you fight back because you're going to see we're going to have to keep fighting because they're going to keep moving. They are going to keep moving either way. And we're seeing it, whether it's inflation or bringing back masks or the rest of the nonsense. But I think this is a marker. And that is why I'm declaring this today, day one of a post-woke world. We finally, let's see it again, post Get it up there. It is post-woke day one because we've just needed a signal. We just needed a bat signal to go, oh, there's something out there. There's somebody out there who might be brave enough to do something. And I think it's starting to happen, but it won't be fully saved by him and it won't be fully saved by Ron DeSantis and it won't be fully saved by me or anyone else. It'll actually be saved by you because the signal is the thing, right? The signal is what sends something to you to go, what can I do in my life to fight the thing. So that is what we are talking about today. Get me my boxing gloves. That's how we're ending this show. I want to go fight Ivan Drago. Uh, all right, we got an ad for you. Ice coffee today. Uh, let's talk about Get Upside. You know, from cringing at the pump to getting an eye popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts, and it really hurts. That's why I started using Get Upside. Get Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, you earn cash back thanks to GetUpside. To get started, download the free GetUpside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use my promo code, Ruben. How do we come up with that? And get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on GetUpside. Check in at the business. Pay as usual with a credit or debit card and get paid. Get Upside isn't just for gas. You can earn up to 30% cash back at grocery stores, restaurants, and on food delivery as well. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Get Upside. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Get Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free GetUpside app and use promo code RUBIN to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of 10 bucks or more using promo code RUBIN. Okay, let's talk about fighting back because I mentioned to you guys yesterday, Philadelphia, which is in the once great state, one of our first states of the union, uh, Pennsylvania, it is reinstituting the mask mandate. That is in stark contrast with what's going on right here in the free state of Florida. So here is solution number one in the post-woke world. Do not back down with Ron DeSantis. In the last week or so, we've seen major outbreaks of COVID-19 among uh, the elite in DC, including Democrats in Congress, the Biden administration. How does it feel to read about that news knowing that the administration has been so critical of your approach to the pandemic? So just let me say it very clearly to all Floridians, you just saw Philadelphia impose an indoor mandate. You're gonna have potentially some of these other deep blue jurisdictions go back to restrictions and mandate. You look what's happening in Shanghai, they have everybody under a brutal lockdown. So I just wanna be very clear, as long as I sit in the chair in which I sit, no Floridian will be restricted, mandated, or locked down in any possible way. Right, Mr. Governor. So what's going on exactly in Philadelphia right now? Well, we've got some info from the Daily Wire. Philadelphia will mandate indoor masking on April 18th the city's health department announced Monday. The announcement came as a new variant, BA.2, continues to sweep across the nation. The paper cited health commissioner Cheryl Bettigal as saying the number of cases have prompted the move. Complete and utter nonsense at this point. If you are a Philadelphian, whether you work at the cream cheese factory or you clean the Rocky statue, uh, up over at the top of the stairs, you should not listen to this. These people do not deserve your attention and your respect any longer. If you would like to wear a mask uh, at Phil in Philadelphia, then wear a mask. Two years ago, guys, we're past two years from two weeks to flatten the curve. Okay, we're past the point. But now 
this is spreading because we sort of got post COVID, right? We did our war thing, the Ukraine Russia war thing for about six weeks. We seemingly were getting past COVID. Nobody was talking about it anymore, but now it's coming back. They're bringing it back. And what happened yesterday? Well, they decided that the mask mandate on planes is gonna continue. We've got uh, some info from CNBC. The Biden administration is extending a mask mandate for airplanes and transit for 15 days, the CDC said on Wednesday. The mandate was set to expire after April 18th, following a one month extension announced in March. Airlines have required masks on planes since early in the COVID pandemic in 2020, but the Biden administration made them mandatory in early 2021. Okay, again, on the plane situation, every time you get on a plane, they show you a video, often cartoon, or sometime a very Botoxed uh, woman, and she's got the big thing and it's a green gun and they're spraying the plane and the man's got the mask and brr, and they, they, they tell you that we filter out 99.9. They tell you it's a fast, you know, it's the safest air known to man and blah, blah, blah. But it has nothing to do with that. Once again, they will just push you. They will just push you and push you and push you. And the same day that Philly is bringing back the masks is the same day that the CDC is extending the situation on the planes. And of course that is backed by the Biden administration. So what do you have to do? What do you have to do? You have to do what Rocky Balboa said at the top of the show. You have to realize that you have to do something about your life. You have to do what Ron DeSantis just said. I, no, no, no more. Sorry, no more. We will not do this anymore. Uh, but of course, here's uh, Lord Fauci, who again, has gotten everything wrong the entire way, explaining why the mask mandate was extended. Well, let's talk about uh, the fact, first of all, that we understand that the TSA is going to extend that mask mandate for public transportation. I know it's not announced yet, but that is our reporting. Uh, so given the fact that we are still seeing the surge in Europe, uh, we're still seeing the effects here in the Northeast, why only 15 days? Well, I think, uh, Angie, because it's a moving target and we really want to see what the pattern is here in the United States. I think making a decision for April 18th, uh, I would agree that we really do need more time. It isn't like things are static. Things are moving. We're seeing an increase throughout the country. We're seeing it more so in certain cities and certain regions than others. And until we get a really good handle on it, I think it's prudent. I mean, I don't know what the official word has been about that, but if they do extend it, I would not be surprised. And I think that that would be a prudent thing to do. Uh, Philadelphia is bringing back its indoor mask mandate as of next week as well. Okay, so as always, no numbers from Fauci, no explanation. It's these vague terms and it would be prudent and we'll have to see and numbers drop and go up. There's just never an honest assessment of anything with this clown. Uh, he also called Andrea Mitchell Angie. Her name is Angela, not Angie, uh, but putting that aside, but even the way that she framed it, did you hear the way that she framed it? Why only 15 days? Uh, you crazy MSNBC harpy. Do you remember it was 15 days to flatten the curve two years ago? What an insane, like you legitimately have to be a crazy person. You have to be a crazy person or a true psychopath to think that Anthony Fauci should have the authority at this point to have any authority over anyone's life, mask related, mandate related, or anything else. Now this, because I want solutions, we're looking for solutions, but I gotta show you one more thing before solutions. You may remember uh, this video we showed you, I think it was yesterday, Kamala Harris, uh, she's wearing masks or not wearing masks, but it really just depends on how important the event that she's going to is, according to Jen Psaki. Last question, you said on Friday that um, the vice president was masked indoors all day, but the White House tweeted a video showing her standing over the president without a mask on. Can you explain what happened there? Well, I would say that the vice president and the president and all of us abide by what the CDC protocols are. It was an emotional day. It was a historic day. And there were moments when she was not wearing a mask inside, including in a photo, but she was wearing it 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah, she was wearing it 99.9% .9 of the time. Just epic bullshit, like epic bullshit. 
shit, okay? And then this, uh, we abide by CDC protocols, it, but you know, it was a very important day. Uh, we'd have to pull up the CDC protocols, but I'm sure there's an asterisk on there and it says, but if you're doing something that's really important, you know what I mean? If you've got a, uh, you know, a Supreme Court nominee that's getting in, then it's okay. Or a wedding or a bris, then it's all right. COVID can't, you know, ugh. okay, you got it. So what do you do? What do you do? Because now we're talking solutions. You don't just stand your ground and take it. That's what you don't do. You call out their bullshit. Ron DeSantis, ladies and gentlemen. You look over the last two years, there's a cottage industry that was developed of lockdown politicians and media personalities who would either impose or support lockdown policies in their jurisdictions or advocated on their TV shows, criticize Florida mercilessly, and then the first chance they get to get out from under the yoke of those bad policies, you see them in Miami or Palm Beach or all these other places. And if I had a dollar for every lockdown politician that escaped their own policies to come to our free state, I would be set for life. That's just the fact. Now, some people will say, oh, they're, they're hypocrites, all this stuff. Yeah, they are, but that's not the issue. The issue is, is if they thought their policies really were necessary and these mitigations really were effective, they would be abiding by it. They're not abiding by it because they know it's all about politics and control. So that's why they don't wear the mask. That's why they don't do all this stuff, because they know it is COVID theater. And so we don't have any tolerance for COVID theater in the state of Florida. I can tell you this state would not be booming the way it is if we had had, had COVID theater. People know that this is the free state. They know that they can come here and make their own decisions. They know they're not going to be harassed to show medical papers to go have a hamburger somewhere. Uh, they know they're going to be able to enjoy life. And so we are never going to waver from that. I will say that, um, you know, if it weren't for our leadership, you know, we would have had kids locked out of school for a year uh, uh, throughout this state. Uh, we would have had hundreds of thousands of people tossed out of work. We would have had uh, small businesses and family-owned businesses that would have collapsed. Um, and instead uh, of that, uh, you know, we weren't locking those people down. We were lifting them up. And that was the right thing to do. The truth, it's refreshing. We should trademark that. You guys want to get a hamburger today? You talked about the hamburgers without the masks. You guys want hamburgers? Hamburgers for everybody? Cheese for you? All right, we're getting hamburgers today. Shake Shack, people. In case you ain't feeling juiced up yet, and you should be feeling juiced up right now because we gave you Rocky, we gave you Elon Musk, we gave you DeSantis. I'm going to talk to you about inflation in a second. That's going to depress you. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Super Beats. You know, as we age, the fatigue and lack of endurance we feel can't always be fixed with more and more caffeine. Introducing a new way to start your day, Super Beats Heart Chews. They're a tasty treat that gives you the energy you need and are good for you. No more afternoon coffees, energy drinks, and candy for a quick pick-me-up. Add two delicious plant-based Super Beat Heart Chews to your morning routine and promote heart-healthy energy for your day without caffeine crash. Because Super Beats Heart Chews are unique clinically researched grape seed es extract because they promote heart healthy energy and normal blood pressure as part of a healthy lifestyle. I mumbled that a little bit, but you got the idea. Uh, the grape seed extract used in Super Beats Heart Chews has clinically shown to be two times as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as a healthy lifestyle alone. Do more for your heart and treat yourself with Super Beats Heart Chews, for my listeners only, you can get up to 45% off plus free shipping at superbeats.com slash Ruben. This is their best offer available anywhere. That's superbeats.com slash Ruben for up to 45% off at superbeats.com slash Ruben. And I did toss in two of those this morning. I, they're sort of like gummy bears. Tossed them in and maybe that's why I'm so amped up today. It is quite possible. Okay, so now let's talk about inflation because even though we are fighting back, they are going to keep coming. They are an unstoppable rebel force, but we are going to stop them. They think they're unstoppable, but they can't keep that secret. Uh, here's Jen Psaki. This is Monday, a warning of the high inflation situation. 
So because of the actions we've taken to address uh, Putin, the Putin price hike, we are in a better place than we were last month. Um, but we expect March CPA, CPI headline inflation to be extraordinarily elevated due to Putin's price hike. And we expect a large difference between core and headline inflation reflecting the global disruptions in energy and food markets. So core infl inflation doesn't include energy and food prices. Uh, headline inflation does. Putin's price hike, Putin's price hike, Putin's price hike. It has nothing to do with them uh, printing all this money. It has nothing to do with them giving out all this money. It has nothing to do with any of the ridiculous policies that they have instituted. It's Putin's price hike. It's almost as if these people have nothing to do with anything happening right now. It's quite extraordinary. They keep putting on their fancy outfits and they keep giving speeches and they stand at, at lecterns and they do all of this stuff, but they don't have anything to do with anything going on. It's just this guy in Russia who can do whatever he wants to us at any point. Quite extraordinary, wouldn't you say? Uh, but we've got actual numbers uh, from NBC today. And the rising cost of everyday life in this country, new numbers confirming what we already know, inflation is skyrocketing, reaching a 41-year high. And we're getting a sense of exactly how much it is costing the average American family. NBC's Tom Costello on the story again for us. Tom, good morning. Yeah, we are seeing higher prices for everything, for food, for housing, for used cars. But the biggest driver of this last month, energy, fuel, gas prices. Now, the Biden administration is adding more ethanol into the summer blend, hoping that that will, in fact, help drive down gas prices. The bottom line, though, experts say the impact may be minimal. Many Americans have known it for a long time, but now it is official. Inflation is skyrocketing, hitting 8.5% last month, the highest since 1981. A big driver, gas prices, which a new government forecast predicts will reach an eight-year high this summer. While right now prices are down 24 cents from their highs in March, the national average is still $4.08 a gallon, up $1.22 from a year ago. Now, the Biden administration administration is announcing a temporary summertime waiver to allow for the sale of E15, a blend of gas with 15% ethanol. Even if it's an extra buck or two in the pockets that they fill up will make a difference in people's lives. But adding more ethanol may have a limited impact, since only one and a half percent of gas stations nationwide actually carry E15. It's not just energy prices that are fueling inflation. Food is up 8.8 percent year over year, the biggest annual increase in 41 years. You literally cannot make this shit up. Their, their solution is to put more ethanol in the gas, which is not good for the cars. That's why the ethanol is not there in the first place. And only 1.5% of the gas stations allow for this, right? Okay, do you realize how insane these people are? But it has nothing to do with them because there is a scary man in Russia and he rides a horse without a shirt and he must be stopped at all costs. It is complete and utter nonsense. It is a total shell game. They do all of the stuff that has ransacked and wrecked the economy. This was not happening under scary orange man. And then they blame shirtless horse riding Russian guy. Get rid of your vodka if you're a true American. Uh, but they also try to scare the hell out of you the entire time because if they didn't do the stuff that they're doing, you'd be starving. Take responsibility for his decisions, like some say the American Rescue Plan boosted demand uh, when it didn't need to. Larry Summers was one of those. Well, the alternative would have been uh, that we would have gone into a massive economic downward spiral, and many Americans would have not had enough food uh, to put on the table. So we chose the other path. Can you believe it, guys? If they hadn't done all this good stuff that they've been doing, printing money out of nowhere and all of the great things that this administration is doing, you wouldn't have food on the table. You'd be absolutely starving. Sure, your food is extremely expensive and your gas is extremely expensive and there's not as much stuff on the shelves and everything is taking forever to get delivered. Actually, we're trying to just paint our uh, guest bedroom white. We're gonna turn a guest bedroom into the baby's room. We just wanna literally paint it white. And the contractor came yesterday and he said that paint, white paint, is four times as expensive as it was last year. But thank you, Saki. I'm not starving to death. I do have some frozen meat in the fridge, so in the freezer, in the, uh, in the garage there. Uh, but she continued, uh, Joe Biden is leading the economy. This is the man leading the whole thing, even though he has nothing to do with anything that's going on here.
also the world also needs to see, or the country needs to say, I guess I should say, uh, how he is continuing to lead on the economy. And uh, I don't know that that's a shift or requiring a shift. It's just a recognition that uh, being able to continue to speak to domestic uh, our domestic audience about that is a huge priority. And his schedule tells the story of how much of a priority is. It's not even double speak with these people because then it would be saying one thing and then saying the opposite. They literally, their head is just spinning, saying endless bullshit that has no connection to reality whatsoever. There was a guy in He-Man. Can you look up the character in He-Man? Manny Faces. You don't have to look it up. I got it. Man, there was a character in He-Man named Manny Faces and his face would just flip around and he would just have different faces on. And that's what these people are. Masters of the universe. That's the, uh, the answer to the uh, quiz show today. Um, But okay, Biden's leading. Now, first they're telling us that that it's because of Putin's price hike, but apparently it's really, if it wasn't about that, it's that Biden is leading and he has to show us he's leading. How's he leading? Well, remember this. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did talk about food shortages. And uh, and it's gonna be real. The, The price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia, it's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. That's leadership, people. Food shortages are coming and we're putting the sanctions on that are causing them. Leadership 101. If you look in the dictionary under leadership, it has Joe Biden's confused face. But you know that the state of all of this is whacked out when even on CNN, the fictitious cartoon network known as CNN, When even they, even Democrat activist Jake Tapper has to acknowledge that some of this is BS. We were covering inflation long before Putin invaded Ukraine. Inflation in the United States in the last year is preceded this attack. uh, And some people hear the president in the White House blaming all of this on Putin and think that's just not accurate. That's just not factual. Hot diggity damn. Can we send uh, Jake Tapper a gift basket? What do we got? We got some some Florida orange. We're going to send him a copy of the book. Tapper, you got one right. I lost a bet. Who knew? It's not just CNN. Then there's this mental institution, MSNBC, with that racist Joy Reid. They are even acknowledging what's going on. Look at this image. Look at this. Up. All the stuff that you don't want up, you'd want down right now. And generally speaking, you'd want down unless you were a partisan maniac. Everything's up. Gas is up about 50%. Used automobiles. I mean, this is insane. Are up 35% because we're not producing enough new ones. Hotels up 25%. I know all about that as I'm trying to go on tour right now. Airfare. I know all about this one too, about 24%. Furniture and bedding, 16%. Meat, poultry, and eggs. You guys all know this when you're going shopping. Everyone sees it. Major appliances are up. Cereal, baked goods, about 10%. This is all obvious and we know it, but it has nothing to do with them on one hand because this is Putin's price hike, but also Joe Biden's in charge and he has to show people he's in charge. None of it makes sense. So people, what is the thing that ties today's show together? You can either believe that these people are in charge and are doing a good job, or you can believe that they are in charge, but actually it's Putin who's really in charge, or you can believe that they are intentionally wrecking everything or some version of all of those things. Or you can take a little responsibility for your life. You can perhaps somehow in your life do what Elon Musk is doing in his life. And I know it doesn't sound quite right. It's like, wait a minute, this guy's like a trillionaire, He's sending Teslas into space. He's going to Mars, all of this stuff. It's like, I'm, I'm in no way related to Elon Musk, but he is one man. He is one human being and he started doing something. So whatever it is in your life that you can do, whether it's you start growing some food in your backyard, which they don't want you to do, whether it is that you cancel Disney Plus that they don't want you to do, whether it is that you get your kids out of public school so they don't believe these clowns when they say this nonsense, that would be good. There is a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. You can stand your ground. You can call out their BS and you cannot vote for Democrats. You do not have to be a Republican, but you cannot be a Democrat. That is the message and spread that to your friends and start getting some balls. Really more than anything, I guess that's really what it is. Start getting some balls. Today is post-woke day one. I'm not a mathematician, but that means that tomorrow is post-woke day two. 
And imagine if after years of this woke bullshit, imagine if after years of this slow descent to hell that they have dragged us into, imagine if whatever it is in your life, right? So this is a little bit of Jordan Peterson kind of stuff. You gotta fix yourself before you fix the world. But imagine if you started doing it, and I'm talking to myself too, if all of us started doing it and we started standing up straight with our shoulders back, we started putting truth into the world, we started fighting for what we believe in, we started saying no as they kept encroaching on us and encroaching on our kids and, and lying about everything. Imagine if we all did that and we did it for a week. Do you think things would be better or worse? I'd bet that they'd be better. I'd bet that they'd be better. Uh, we got some comments from rubenreport.locals.com. Aaron says the renewal of masks on public transportation for two more weeks is beyond unscientific. Of course it is. It has nothing to do with science. We know if you wear a mask, you touch your face more. They even, they, they even admitted, after two years, they finally admitted that the cloth masks and basically everything beyond, except for N95s, because you have openings and you can breathe through the top or you can breathe through the bottom or you can breathe through, through the side. They literally did nothing. And in some studies, they've shown that they do less than nothing because you touch your face more. We all do it. We're constantly adjusting the thing. It's not fun. When you actually have to communicate with somebody, you pull the mask. I haven't worn a mask in so long, I really don't remember. But it's something like when you were talking to somebody, you'd be away from each other with the mask, and then you'd be talking and nobody can hear anybody with the mask. And then you talk, pull, oh, can I, <laughs> Jerry, can Elon start a members only airline so sane people can return to travel? I'm not kidding. My one goal in life now is to become so rich I have a plane. And I know that's an extraordinary amount of money. And I'll let people ride the plane. Because once you have the plane, I don't need to fly every day. So I don't know, what do we have to do, an NFT thing? We're trying to figure out the NFT situation. I'm gonna do an NFT. I don't know exactly what that means, but that the kids are saying it's the thing now. We're gonna do an NFT, I'm gonna buy a plane, and you guys can ride my plane. I'm not kidding. I want a plane, people can ride the plane. I'll probably you know, fly here and there. But on the off days, we'll get a cool pilot, We'll get uh, uh, that Lizzo. Maybe she could sing on the plane. That's too much, too much weight. It'll cost us too much in gas. Forget the Lizzo. Um, we're gonna get, it's just gonna, we're doing it. Rock says, uh, we switched to a private school so my kids could be at a mask choice school. Yes, that's the point. Private schools, charter schools, home schools, pods. You can do something. You can do something to remove yourself from the system. The system doesn't deserve your attention or respect if it is not going to respect you back. If it is only going to do bad things and take more and more for you, from you, then it, then it doesn't deserve whatever you're gonna give it, whatever your resources are. I don't mean just financial. You're, it doesn't deserve your attention and your brain power and your skills and all of those things. That is the answer. So it's a combination of all of these things removing yourself, building new things, fighting back, calling out the hypocrisy, doing what Rocky Balboa said, doing what Ron DeSantis said, doing what Elon Musk is saying. And dare I say, doing what Dave Rubin's saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I am on tour. DaveRubin.com slash events. Join us, it kicks off on Tuesday. We can't put ads anywhere on big tech, but I promise you, we are actually going on tour. I hope you will join us, we'll be hitting Florida and Texas and Colorado and California all over the place. Oh, by the way, uh, you can also see, uh, did a little interview with my main man, David Janet, where we put the first part up on YouTube, the rest of it's on Locals. People like it. People are saying they like him more than me. I like him more than me, it's totally fine. Uh, the full thing is up at rubenreport.locals.com. Part two of my interview with Michael Knowles, he actually interviewed me about that book right there. That's up right now. And in summation, we've never done this before, but I felt it was important on a day like today, as I have henceforth declared this post-woke world, and we are in post-woke world day one, we are gonna do the same cold close as the cold open. Enjoy. You changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. 
Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son, you're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life. <laughs>